Don't do too much. Welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Natasha go ahead and subscribe because we have a good time over here so today I'm going to be doing a wig install and I'm trying a new hairstyle this little like claw clip I'm a little late to the trend but better late than what is it Letter, better late than never is that how it goes y'all know what I'm trying to say but I did that and I did my makeup I'm giving you guys some pro makeup tips beginner friendly we love that we love easy but professional tips, right? So if you want to see how I got this look, make sure you guys are liking this video for me, subscribing to my channel, and make sure you guys check out the description box for all the information. Shout out to Julia here for sponsoring today's video. And keep watching. All right, guys, so I'm back in my bathroom for this wig install. Like I said, it's a lot easier for me. The lighting is not the best. We will work on it for the future, but for now, this is what it is. So I'm just prepping my hair, and I'm just spraying my hair with like this intensive treatment so my scalp is not itchy and dry, especially under my wig. And I'm taking this As I Am, is it As I, as I Am? Yeah, As I Am gel, and slicking my hair back. It does not get hard or crunchy. I really like it, and it doesn't break my edges because it doesn't have alcohol in it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put on a wig cap. You guys know I don't do a ball cap. I don't do nude caps. I just do a good old black cap and call it a day. You guys will see it gets the job done and it looks just as good and just as flat. So this is the wig. It's coming up in a second. Boom. This is the wig that I received from Julia Hair. This is a kinky straight texture. It's 24 inches, 150% density. And that's all I know off the top of my head. Everything else will be listed down below. You guys, this wig was bomb.com. I loved it, loved it, loved it, especially because I did my newer technique on this wig. Loved how it came out. Like, it just looks so freaking good. So I'm installing my wig like I've been doing. If you guys know, you know the gel underneath and then the spray. It's not a new technique. It's just newer for me or I'm revisiting an old technique. It just lays my wigs a lot better. So today we're going to be doing a claw clip kind of style. And I did over bleach my knots a little bit. This little batch of wigs, I just kept over bleaching, so forgive me, but they, they was looking good. Sometimes when it's over bleach, it looks good. But anyways, um, I'm gonna be doing the claw clip. This is like really trendy hairstyle right now. I like slicked in the front with the middle part and then the claw clip and half up, half down. Super cute, super fun, super girly, super um youthful. Why don't we say that? <laughs> um, but I've been seeing it around on TikTok and I just see people doing it but it's really quick, so I wasn't really sure how to do it. So I tried a few weeks ago and I did it and it was super easy. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I did that style after we installed this wig.
the installing part is done and now it is time to style i attempted to do this a few weeks ago you guys and it was hard but now i think i have it down packed so of course you want to start with your hair in the middle part and you want to section half of the frontal and then you want to start slicking it down you want to slick it down like this hot comb it brush it hairspray it gel it do whatever suits you i wanted my um half up half down style to be a little bit lighter a little not so slick and gelled you guys know i like like lighter hairstyles more effortless hairstyle effortless so, hairstyles so that's what i'm doing and then i'm just going to bring it around to the back of my head and put a hair tie like so so that it stays slick and it's not puffing up throughout the day and then i'm going to take the other half of the frontal and put that into a half up um like a ponytail like half up half down now that that's up and then you literally just add a claw clip and that is it so easy i was over complicating it i was making it so hard but it's really really easy um so i do kind of like a lower ponytail because you do have to claw clip it up you don't want the claw clip to really be showing so um you guys see i like fold the ponytail kind of in half claw clip it and then it does that like palm tree thing and that was it you guys it's super easy super quick and super cute it takes no time at all it's literally so easy i did not flat iron this hair all i did was blow dry it on the mannequin head before putting it on because it was wet otherwise i would have left it as is i liked it with the texture it made it look fluffy it made it look effortless and very natural so yeah do as you please once again make sure you guys check out julia hair i will leave all the information down in the description box this was one of my favorite um, kinky textures especially with this hairline baby yes so hair is done we look cute and i actually did my makeup the next day so the install that you're seeing is the next day so yeah Okay, so this is the hair, you guys. Super cute and simple. It's just so fun. I've really been liking my hair out of my face as well. So this is like really a vibe. I love it. So we're gonna go ahead and do the makeup. Uh, I'm gonna do something very simple but snatched. Um, I did this makeup look last night. Oh, what's going on with my baby hairs, you guys? So I did my... Um, makeup last night and I really liked it so I'm gonna just try to recreate that so of course I'm going in with my brow gel and I'm not doing like the laminated thing I'm doing a quicker brow tutorial so now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my brows I'm using my house labs brow pencil in dark brown I really like this pencil a lot this has been one of my I'll be plucking the, the flyaways um, this has been one of my like go-to brow pencils and it's really good like I need to give house lab some credit honey because not only is the foundation amazing the freaking other products are great too the bronzers the lip oils I heard the eyeliners are great I don't really buy eyeliners that much the eyeliners that I have are like stuff that I'm used to. And I actually only took like 20 minutes yesterday doing my face and it was like a full glam. I just like simplified the steps a little bit. If you watch my um, makeup tutorials, then you know like sometimes I'm really intricate, sometimes I cut corners. It just depends on how I'm feeling. But my makeup came out so good. All right, so my brows are done. Very, very simple. Okay, and I don't remember, did I do my eyes first yesterday or did I do my face? Hmm, I'm just gonna do the eyes. So I'm gonna take the rest over concealer that's on my hand and put that on my eyes so that my shadows have something to stick to. Because... So I'm gonna go in with my ColourPop Nude Mood Palette. This has been holding me down for a few years. Um, I need to find the brush that I'm looking for. I'm gonna go into the shade, the Coco, and I'm gonna put that in my transition. I mean, <laughs> in my crease as a transition. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm just lightly putting that in the crease. Like so, and you guys see the difference? I did dip into this palette yesterday, but I used other palettes, but I wanna really simplify this 
and try to achieve the same look with one palette instead of dipping into 20 palettes not that type of day so we're just gonna keep it simple so now i'm going into this shade it's kind of dirty moody it's a dark brown and i'm going to put that lower in my crease just to define that crease area and create some more shape and depth sometimes words sound wrong when i say them or spell them like depth depth i know that's right but it just sounds so weird like who came up with that and even like the way it's spelled like it's so weird when you look at a word for too long and you're like is that how you spell it now i'm gonna go in with this flat brush and do you guys see those hairs how like packed and dense it is that is going to pick up the product the best or that's what works for me the best and a lot of people like like a fluffy eyeshadow brush i like a very packed and dense brush so i'm going to go into the shade dare to bear and i'm going to put that all over my lid i'm not going to be adding any kind of um glitter glue you guys know sometimes i do that when i do my matte eye but I want the final result of this to be a little bit softer and more effortless. So this one is more of like a tan kind of nude. This one is like a white, white nude. So I'm going to go in with this shade, which is Buffin. And I'm going to put that like more in my inner corner. And you guys see how that's making it pop a little bit more and opening my eye. But I'm not placing it in my inner corner this way. I'm kind of going upwards and shaping my eyes so that it looks a little bit wider. I'm like back on my um, matte creamy eyelid thing. It's just like doing it for me recently. I really like it. So now I'm going to... Oh, oh, oh. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> so now I'm going to be going in with this fluffy brush with no extra product. And I'm just blending everything together. The goal is not for this to be perfect. I just am kind of like emphasizing what I already have going on. So just going to go like so. So I am done with my eyes for now. I'm going to go back in at the end and add liner and lashes and bottom mascara. That's it. It's not like a lot, but it's really simple. It's like one movement for me. All right. So now moving on to the face. I'm actually going to go in with this Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer which I've had for a long time. I told you guys I'm dipping back into my makeup. I'm using things that I keep buying. Like I literally went to Sephora the other day because I was bored and <laughs> I didn't get anything. I got a Benefit brow gel. I got a, a full size one because you guys know I've been using that mini one. Let me turn my phone off. It's a distraction. Um, so yeah, I went in and got that because I literally have everything and anything else that I was picking up was just because like, I felt like I needed it, but I really didn't. And it's funny because today, let me put on my primer while I talk. So I'm going to put this on. This is amazing. This kind of reminds me of like my YSO. It, okay, this this primer is a mix of my YSO blurring primer and my e.l.f. putty primer in one. Like you guys know I typically mix those two anyways. This is like the two had a baby. It's like a perfect balance. But... um my mom was saying like oh you're probably gonna like go to target today and spend like 300 dollars." and i was like actually no i'm not the last few times i've gone to target i have picked up necessities i haven't like bought an abundance of things because you guys i have everything it sounds so crazy but i really do anything i buy is like new or for content but like overall i have everything that i need and i have more than i need like um, yeah, moving along to the face. So the other day I did this combination of the Dior Backstage, let me show you, the Dior Backstage Foundation and Pat McGrath. Amazing, amazing. I really like this, but I genuinely feel like it's missing something. It's a really nice foundation. I get it. I do get it. I understand it. But for me personally, it is missing something. This don't need nothing, but the two together, baby, 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 baby. So yesterday I actually used medium deep 24 with this, but I'm going to use 26 because it was looking a little light to me and I didn't really like that. So I'm using medium deep 26 and 6N in the Dior and we're going to just apply it. I haven't mixed my foundation in a while. I've been just, you know, using it as is. Um. But we're just gonna have a little fun so i'm just gonna apply this all over and it did it did match really well but it just was like too yellow like you know how like a foundation will match you but like 
the corners i get it get it okay i just like to go like a shade up it doesn't hurt <laughs> because you add so much concealer and highlighting well i do that it kind of takes away so when i put on the foundation initially it was perfect and it was still perfect but it was just too bright right here which was making me look washed out and i didn't like that so now i'm gonna spray my morphe spray which i actually need a new one do you guys know that at work i go through a regular size of this like once a week the jumbo one has been lasting me but the jumbo one is always sold out and this one is like almost done i'm gonna have to get a new one hopefully they have it in store i know somebody's gonna be like just order it i don't know i just like going in store and getting my stuff y'all know i'm an old lady y'all know i'm old-fashioned so i'm just going to continue blending that and my chin is still going through something oh my gosh and this foundation oh i wanted to color correct dang but anyways this foundation combination gives you like a natural matte finish in my opinion not too too matte because i started using my nars soft matte again which is really nice but then i just started feeling like it was just too matte i'm just not i can't fully commit to the madness like it gives in that moment but it just feels very thick <laughs> that was a <laughs> it feels very thick and i just can't i need a balance babe Balance, balance, balance. Damn. That's how this looks. Oh, it looks nice and tanned and chocolatey. Love that. Going with the Dior Backstage Concealer in 5N. I just like this concealer. It's a very, like, simplified concealer that gets the job done. It's not too matte. It's not too radiant, it's not too thick, it's not anything like that. It's just a regular concealer and it's great. I wasn't recording and I just gave you guys gems. But like I was saying, I feel like this concealer is like a great beginner friendly concealer and not beginner friendly in price because it is Dior so it's a little bit on the pricier side but if you're just getting into makeup but you maybe want to elevate some of your products and kind of upgrade them, this concealer is gonna be great for you. I feel like it works for every skin type. Why is there a dog barking? It works for every skin type. It blends out like a dream. Like, do you guys see that? It's not too matte, it's not too radiant, it's not, um, it doesn't have a learning curve. I feel like some concealers have a learning curve. Like, oh, you should blend it out like this and like that and it goes with this powder, that powder. This will be perfect with any skin type, like, it is literally the definition of a perfect concealer. And I feel like I use this a lot and I don't talk about it enough, but I realize this is one of my go-to go concealers because it's so simple. And I literally know how my face is gonna look when I wear it. And I love that. So that's my face with the concealer. So if you wanted to, you can stop here. I feel like also a lot of times with concealers, I feel like I have to layer them, right? Because that's just me. With this, I feel like if I set this, I could stop here because it just it's not missing anything it just looks really good my face looks nice and balanced but y'all know i'm extra so i'm gonna go with my charlotte tilbury and i'm gonna brighten up my under eye a little bit you guys see this one's a little bit brighter um i really do like this concealer as well especially recently i don't know what's going on but here we are um but i like this this is more of like a radiant concealer but she's really like full coverage and like she blends out nice. So I'm gonna let this concealer sit and thicken up a little bit um, because it needs to. But I'm gonna go with my She Glam Liquid Contour. And you guys, this is so pigmented. Literally, that can do my whole face, but you know me. <laughs> Gotta do a little bit extra. And I'm not gonna do my forehead. Um, no, I'm not gonna do my nose either. Oh my gosh, yesterday, I feel like I perfected the Sizzle Nose Contour, so I'm gonna put y'all on. I'm just gonna take a brush and blend this out, and you guys see how pigmented that is? Like, get the heck out of here. <laughs> this is so pigmented, I love it. And I know She Glam is really affordable. I'm not 100% sure how much these are. I believe these are like five bucks. Y'all get them. Some of the shades are a little gray. If you're lighter than me, which is crazy because normally it's like, if you're darker, these aren't gonna work. No, if you're lighter, they're giving gray, okay? Because they're definitely contours and not bronzers. So I don't know what's going on with that shade range right there, but this, 
right here. Amazing. So now that that's blended out to perfection, like what? Look at my face. I'm gonna go in with my one size powder and I'm gonna set that. I use the translucent shade. I'm just gonna set my under eyes. And do you guys see the difference that setting your under eyes does? It gives you that nice blurred look. It's just gonna keep everything in place. So yesterday when I did this, I actually went in with Coco Naughty. And then I went in with my Mented because I felt like it wasn't enough. So I'm just going to start with this first and see if I even need to go up. Because what had happened was I felt like my foundation was looking a little bit too light. Why I went in with the Mented to like deepen it up. But I think Coco Naughty will do just fine because the liquid contour gave me enough depth in my face, I feel like. Mind you, yesterday this look took literally 20 minutes. But of course I'm talking to you and taking my time. So that you guys can learn. So I went ahead and zoomed you guys in because we're going to get into this nose contour. Yesterday, hopefully I can do it again. Yesterday my nose contour was giving sizzle. And I lived. I lived. Um, it was a little bit much in person. And that's typically how things are. A lot of us have not seen sizzle in person or see her on a day to day. Not saying it does, her makeup doesn't look good. But it photographs well. In person, things that translate on photos don't always look that flattering in person so you can definitely see my contour but if you are a picture girl and you want to give that then i got you so i'm going to use coco naughty when contouring your nose you don't have to go deep it's just all about really sculpting your nose because you can see i already have natural shadows on my nose so i don't need to go any deeper i would i mean i do sometime but like i don't like going in with something this deep i prefer this because it's more neutral this is a little bit too red and the typical bronzer is red or too dark so I literally as you can see Coco Naughty is ran down to the ground I need to remember to get a new one but um, I always use Coco Naughty so I'm using this brush from brush from Japanesque and it looks like this it's like a flat brush it is a Japanesque uh, 726 brush it's like rubbed off 726 brush and I got it from TJ Maxx so anything shaped like this this is probably called like a flat shader brush which they say it's for eyeshadow. I don't use this for eyeshadow. I use it for my nose contour. Always have, always will. I mean, I'll probably change it up, but I've been using a brush like this for my nose contour for years. May not have been this brush, but it was this kind of shape. So I'm gonna go on with Coco Naughty, and I'm just going to get some on my brush. And my nose is already pretty narrow, as you can see, but I just like to emphasize it more. So when you're contouring your nose, everybody's nose is gonna be different, remember that. But the closer you bring the contour lines together, the smaller your nose is gonna appear or more snatched your nose is gonna appear. So that's what I do. I typically will start like from the middle and I will just bring the line down like that. And you guys are gonna see my nose start to shape and this is why I like Coco Naughty because you guys see it looks like a it looks like a shadow on my nose. You don't need a harsh line. You don't need anything crazy. You just need something like this. So I go like that, and that's one line. So I bring it in further because my nose starts. I don't know what this is called, but like my natural shadow is like right here, which you know makes my nose what my nose is but I just bring it in a little bit more and it just pinches it some more so I'm going a little bit closer in and you guys can see that and just take your time building it up it's not it's a slow and steady race okay and you guys can already see right there my nose looks smaller <laughs> so now that those two lines have been made I'm gonna go into my brow and take the rest of that and connect it because you don't want just two lines you want it to be connected to something so that everything flows together so I always go in like this because naturally it goes like that and I just lightly buff it out and then I like to add contour on the tip of my nose because what this does is it lifts it. That shadow kind of cuts your nose off and gives you that like button type of turned up nose or the illusion of it. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that you guys really noticed my nose contour. I always thought my nose contour was mid, 
But like literally every time I do a video, everybody's like, um, whoa, the nose. I'm like, did I really snatch it that much? I feel like I could be doing more. Um, but I've, oh, I feel, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm teaching you today, okay? So anyways, I add a little bit here. Normally I would stop here and then add highlighter on my nose, but for that scissor effect, she has like, she like cuts her nose at the tip so that it gives a button slash turned up effect. So I just like to take the brush and go right across. And I don't have a nose like that, so I don't always do this because it will look weird sometimes, but it looked good yesterday. So that's why I'm hoping it comes out good again. So just kind of go a little bit above the tip of the nose and go across. Like so. And just kind of like go over and take your time, like I said, adding the product. Don't do too much don't do too much and already my nose looks like more buttony um you could change your nose contour sometimes i don't contour my nose honestly very rare but sometimes i don't and then where's my brush so i'm gonna go in with my house labs highlighter and i'm gonna take a little brush i would prefer a smaller one but the other one's dirty so we're just gonna use this and this is the tip of my nose this is the tip of my nose i'm gonna go a little bit above my nose which is gonna make my nose appear even shorter and um, I'm going to place that first little dab of highlighter right there. And I don't do too much because I don't really want it to be shiny. But it says to be having that dab nose. And then you're going to start right here. You're not going to do a whole line all the way through. You're going to do a little bit of highlighter right there up until where like, that line is. And yeah. And then I'm gonna tone that down with some powder for now. And as I'm doing my face, that's gonna turn uh, tone down. But overall, this is it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna keep this pushing. Y'all will see the vision later. Let me know if you see a difference. I don't be seeing a difference in my nose immediately until like after the fact. Like right now, I feel like I didn't do anything, but I know when my makeup's done, I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh. So now I'm gonna take this powder. And I'm going to snatch the sides and do like a reverse contour. I'm going to go over that highlight so that it can tone it down a little bit. And then you just want to take, oh, let's find our brush first. How did I lose the brush that fast? That's crazy. So also when you're, when you're baking, you want to make sure your lines are straight so you don't mess up what you did. And just go back over it and make sure it's not baking the areas that you want to be contoured. Let this take a little time. I really do this fast, but for learning purposes, I'm taking my time and showing you guys. We're doing some hot paint blush. It's been a while since I did a hot pink blush. This is Juvia's Place Volume 4. And I'm going in with the darker shade. I'd be going into this one sometime, but it's not necessary. Like, let's be for real. Where, where is this going on my face? So I go in with this one, and you guys know I'm just going to take a fluffy brush and put my blush right there. And it just transforms the face, baby. I don't typically do this technique with the hot pink. So, eep! But I know at the end it's going to be cute or whatever. So now I'm going to be going in with my current favorite product. This is Game Changer, baby. This is the Jaclyn Hale like, Under Eye Brightener. I'm literally getting this in every shade and putting it in my kit because this is like the cherry on top. This is amazing. So I go in with these two shades. This is Hazelnut. No. Yeah, this is hazelnut and apricot. And I just put that underneath my eye and then slowly start to dust away that nose contour. And I like to do this after my blush because it kind of tones down the blush and makes it look like I'm blushing from within because I'm putting this product over my blush, if that makes any sense. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like it just looks like I'm blushing when you put a little bit of powder on top of it instead of the blush just being on top of your face. So it's like, yeah, I want that blush look, but um, I just want everything to kind of just like marry together, merge together and just look really nice. And I just dust this away, no extra product added. But this Jaclyn Hill powder, under eye powder is super smooth. So it sits under the eyes really nicely. I actually want to try her other under eye um powder like the loose one because let's be real Jacqueline's skin always looked smooth the under eye was always you know just it just sat so you know i believe in her i believe in the brand <laughs> um but yeah so next what are we doing next what are we doing next girl y'all how am i forgetting 
the most important part of this all, setting my face. I'm gonna go with my NARS Soft Matte Powder and I'm gonna go ahead and set everything and I just press it in. I'm not gonna swirl because then we're just gonna be getting rid of all the hard work we just did. So I'm just pressing it in. And I don't put it too much under my eye, but I touch my under eye so that it's not just like bright and then skin tone. It kind of just marries together. So now for the lip. I'm going in with this Juvia Place Lip Liner in Coffee Bean. It's very, very deep, but uh, I like that. And I don't know if you guys saw my last tutorial. I like did the straight across thing, didn't like that. So I'm gonna define my cupid's bow. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna take a lip brush. This one's from Laura Mercier, and I'm just gonna blend this out and it makes such a difference. I don't know why I haven't been doing this, but I am crazy. Like the way this brush blends everything out. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna go on with Max Honey Love. I go through these phases where sometimes I just wanna wear gloss. Sometimes I just wanna wear gloss and liner. Sometimes I want uh, lip liner, lip stick, and gloss combo. It just depends, but lately I've been back on this. It just really adds to the full glam look. It gives it a very clean, and professional look when you layer it like this is what I do on my clients I will do lip liner lipstick and gloss so that their last lip let their lip last their lip last and it just looks like really plump and like yeah so next if I can find my gloss I've also recently been obsessed with NYX butter gloss and fortune cookie oh do you hear my stomach Anyways, I've been obsessed with um, NYX Butter Gloss and Fortune Cookie. I need to pick up some more. I probably do have some in, in my drawer. Let me stop. But I just really have been liking this. It's a very like, it never did anything for me. I'm not gonna lie. It didn't do anything for me. I didn't get the hype at first. I used to use them and I'm just like, okay, cool. I get it. And for layering, absolutely. For touching up, absolutely. I actually give these to my bridesmaids when I do weddings to touch up because like I said, it's great for touching up. I just never got the obsession with just the gloss by itself. But I, you know, I'm, I'm, I get it now. So I'm gonna go on top of that with Fortune Cookie. Cause baby, I just can't with the matte lip. <laughs> and what I like about it actually is that it is a thin gloss. So the fact that I'm layering, my lip isn't getting thick. It's not getting heavy. It just is like doing what I needed to do. And then for that extra plump look, I like to go on top typically with like a shimmer kind of gloss. Um, and today I'm going to use Dress to Dazzle by MAC. It just does it for me when it has a shimmer to it. This isn't even the shimmerist, shimmeriest <laughs> gloss, but it just does it. And it wears really well. I'm not going to lie to you guys, my lip be lasting. When I put my makeup on and I go out, I barely have to touch my lip up. I will only touch my lip up if I go to the bathroom just because my lip is not coming off and everybody's lip be coming off and I'm just like I don't get it and okay we're almost done here I'm gonna spray my face again with my Morphe setting spray so I'm gonna go ahead and do my liner and lashes off camera and I'll be back okay, so this is a completed look I hope you guys enjoyed it I have fun doing this look it's just like super cute I love how my face came out I love my hair and make sure you guys check out Julia's hair I will leave all the information down in the description box as well as the makeup products because y'all need everything that I use because what what yes so thanks so much for watching you guys and I will see you guys next time bye